Alright, I will let them in. Hi! Hi, how are you? Hi, good, good. Wow, <laughs> looking great. Thank uh, you. Oh, we've got uh, the name change. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Samuel. Nice to see you. Oh, hi, Terry. Hi, Rebecca. Oh, good, good. Hi, good morning. Hi, <laughs> good morning. Yeah. Um, hi, Ami. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Are you joining everyone. us uh, from Florida? Uh, I'm in the Middle East at the moment. Oh, Middle so East. So the oh, wow. UAE, yeah. Okay. How have you been, Sam? Yeah, great. Um, still catching up with uh, sleep and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perpetual, perpetual <laughs> catch-up for you, isn't it? Yes, yes <laughs> perpetual. I think it's a bit perpetual, yeah. Um, Hi, Thanks Justin. for inviting. Hi, Samuel. How are you? You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you so much for your time to be with uh, us here today. Um, yeah, as we uh, wait a little bit more, we're going to also record this. I think we're, we're also recording this. And uh, we're going to be also putting this on our social media. Please uh, greet with one another, uh, Rebecca, Ami, Nikita, Kerry, Justin, Hello. and your fellow uh, Hi. authors. Hi. Hi. Hi I'm, gonna, I'm gonna confess that I've had a chance to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking to hear about it more from each of the other co-authors as well. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we're going to be soon shipping out the book. So, uh, yeah, that's what we plan to do. So if uh, if you haven't sent your uh, address yet, please uh, let me know. I will, um, I will be sending them out to you, okay? Thank you, Nazir, for helping me with the background. Hi, <laughs> Hi Ami. I, I just, I'm just Googling everybody right now. I'm just like, Ami is doing mastery coaching as well. Yes. Right. You. It's nice to e meet you, Carrie. Okay, um, I think we can get started. Okay, um, you know, yeah, yeah, we can go and get started. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome every one of you uh, for those who are here, but also joining us uh, in our social media, uh, Facebook and uh, other platforms. Uh, we would like to very much welcome you uh, to this, our very first virtual book launch of our latest uh, publication, uh, Rethinking Asia, Volume 8, uh, Women's Leadership Retold, What to Keep, What to Leave Behind, and What to Build. Um, we also have the authors here with us. Not everyone was able to, uh, is able to be here because of the time differences, uh, but we have a good number of authors here, and I'd like to 
uh, first of all, thank you to thank, uh, thank every one of the authors who are present here today, as well as the, um, our, our audiences here, our guests uh, who are here with us as well. Uh, so uh, let me introduce myself. I am Samuel Kim, and I am the, co uh, I am the founding president of the Center for Asian Leadership. And uh, I have been very much uh, a part of the journey along with our esteemed authors uh, to produce our latest publication. Uh, I must uh, say that I've learned so much through this journey. Uh, also, it has taken a long time because there was a lot that I need to learn uh, about the topic, uh, the, the book uh, that addresses on this topic. And so uh, it was a personally a great uh, a journey for me. And uh, I am really, really delighted to uh, tell you that finally the book has uh, is out there, uh, you know, in hard copies and e-copies with us. Um, you know, what we can do is that before we go, I'd like to have uh, invite uh, every one of our authors to introduce themselves um, to our guest here. Okay, so can we begin uh, from what I see from my screen? I see Nikita first uh, on the top left corner, uh, and then I'm going to go with Ami, uh, Kerry. Uh, Rebecca and Justin. Okay, so Nikita, please introduce Thank yourself. You. Thank you, Sam. Hi, hi everyone. I am Nikita Jain. I'm signing in from India. I come with almost 10 years of uh, experience in leadership development, executive coaching, and uh, specifically very, very passionate about women leadership and women empowerment. Uh, I have, and, and I love to join all of you here for the launch. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Nikita, for joining us from India. Okay, let's head over to Ami next. Hello, everyone. My name is Ami Valdemoro, and I am signing in from Dubai in the UAE. I am a leadership coach and an executive coach and the founder of a company called Three Points Ventures. And I'm just very excited to be here and thank you to Sam and John and the whole Cali team for their leadership in uh, bringing this book to life. Hey, okay, thank you, Ami, for joining us uh, from uh, uh, UAE. All right, over to you next, uh, Kerry. Hello, everyone. I'm Kerry from Singapore, and uh, I'm the founder of uh, two charitable organizations working with the underprivileged men and women in Singapore. I'm also a member of parliament here, as well as a transformational self-work and healing coach. And I'm looking forward to connect with everyone here and also to you. Uh, share and 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 hear about the stories, the amazing stories that all of us have gone through that we have to put out in the world. Hopefully, to inspire more leaders. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, Kerry. You know, thank you very much for joining us from Singapore. Thank you. Over to you, Rebecca. Okay, thank you, and it's great to meet some of the other authors tonight. And thank you, Samuel, for putting this book together and uh, also this book launch uh, session. Uh, I am hailing in from Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and I am an adjunct assistant professor in education and specifically educational leadership and policy studies. Um, and I'm also a postdoctoral fellow in a, an international and comparative study on youth homelessness. So Carrie, maybe we should connect after this, but happy to be here. Wonderful, Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining us from Canada. Um, and last but not the least, we've got Mr. Justin Hartley. Go ahead. Hi, Samuel, and uh, hello, fellow authors. Samuel, thanks so much for being uh, the driving force for this book. Uh, without you and your team, it wouldn't have come to fruition. Um, I'm coming to you today from Brisbane, Australia. And uh, my name is Justin Hartley. I'm an international leadership coach, founder and CEO of Model Leadership, and proudly affiliated with the Center for Asia Leadership as the regional head for Oceania. And also, I'm on the teaching faculty. All right, thank you very much. You know, thank you so much for joining us from us. You know, I mean, it is. Uh, uh, you know, I really enjoyed working uh, with every one of you, and 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 you carry so much of the uh, wealth of uh, diversity um, uh, from you know not only geographically but also uh, professionally. Uh, you have so much uh, to add value to this book, and uh, it was really my per a personal pleasure and honor. Uh, to really uh, bring the best, uh, the views that you share uh, into the book. And so once again, I'd like to thank every one of you uh, for uh, really giving a lot of your time and effort 
uh, to produce a uh, really an amazing book uh, this, this round. So um, I want to, uh, first of all, uh, if you go to the next slide, um, I, I want to tell you a little bit about the center uh, for those people that uh, does not really know more uh, about, about us. Uh, we are running four different initiatives uh, under the Center for Asian Leadership. Uh, the first one is called the Asia Leadership Track. Uh, this is a global and regional study tour program uh, specifically designed for scholars at Harvard. Um, and we have been over the past, uh, I think, uh, five years or six years uh, uh, before COVID, uh, we had journey uh, through the uh, 31 countries and 83 cities. Um, and we we're able to meet with the leaders uh, political, government, uh, social, business, uh, nonprofit leaders, and we're able to uh, learn from them. We're also able to carry out uh, the uh, global leadership conferences, the Asia leadership conferences for both the youth, uh, the emerging leaders, um, and we've held, I think, more than 90 conferences uh, in our journey over the past six years. Um, and so uh, we were really able to learn a lot uh, from this journey, and over 600 people have participated in this program. Uh, and because of this uh, track, we were able to actually generate volume number one to five. Uh, book number one to five actually um, um, chronicles of the journey that we've been making to many parts of uh, Asia. Uh, the Asia Leadership Institute is the teaching, consulting, and coaching arm uh, where we engage with the business, government, and nonprofits on this topic of adaptive leadership and strategic foresight. And so we work with a wide range of uh, communities, uh, starting from United Nations, the World Health Organization, uh, to businesses, uh, media, government, uh, and so forth. And uh, we are really grateful that we are able to work uh, in helping to improve uh, the condition, the lives and the conditions of our world. Um, also, uh, Actima Publishing, uh, which is very important to us. This is the research arm, the publication arm of the center. And thus far, we have been producing 14 books, uh, including uh, cases, case studies. Um, and what this does is really uh, trying to uh, really document uh, these great uh, views, perspectives, and insights into, uh, into the book, uh, into the cases. And we share that uh, to promote uh, good ideas on leadership and innovation and so forth. Uh, so Acumen Publishing is the primary arm that has been spearheading this uh, uh, publication. And we're really happy to have uh, produced this uh, last month. The Asian Leadership Conference is a joint uh, uh, endeavor uh, where we, uh, you know, Kerry was also one of the speakers that came uh, as well as Justin. Uh, this is a once a year, uh, but this is, uh, like the Asian, we're trying to uh, promote an Asian version of the World Economic Forum uh, held in Seoul once every year over two, three days. Uh, we hope to see this happening in also other parts of Asia, uh, but this is a, a joint endeavor between the center and a, uh, a media company called Chosen uh, Media. And so uh, we are really happy to be part uh, in promoting uh, knowledges uh, and insights. Uh, usually we have about 400 speakers come to the conference and uh, online wise, we've got about 100,000 over unique viewers as well as about 3,500 uh, 3, uh, attendees uh, to the conference. All right, so uh, this is a little bit about the center. I hope that uh, some of you may be able to keep uh, uh, in, in touch with us uh, and, and to learn about a uh, wide range of activities that we are engaged in. Okay, so what we'll go next to uh, the next slide. Um, I want to let you know that this is the book number eight, uh, Women's Leadership Retold. Uh, as I mentioned to you, book number one to five chronicles the, uh, the track that we were on. Uh, so book number one, book number two, all the way we talk about really a wide range of topics from economic development to entrepreneurship to social and political change, education, uh, you know, why Asia is hopeful uh, and so forth. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I could say that close to maybe about uh, 80 to 100 authors have taken part thus far in producing a really interesting articles uh, through the book. Now, book number six and up to 10 will be more focusing on, um, uh, you know, uh, themes, uh, themes that are, per uh, are related to our, our challenges today. For example, the book number six talks about leadership 
uh, and we talk a, a lot about the uh, different types of leadership that can be helpful in, in dealing with and confronting uh, the challenge that we face today. Uh, book number seven talks about the future of work and ways that we can prepare for it. Um, so uh, a lot of dis uh, disruptions, hyper uh, uncertainties, the volatilities. Uh, it's a pretty a thick book. Um, I can tell you, uh, it's about, I think, 340 pages, uh, but we've got a really an amazing um, substance in the book. And book number eight, which I can show you here, uh, is, I think, I'm not sure if you can see this, uh, but book number six here, um, okay, um, yeah, book number, uh, book number eight, uh, I have the copy here, is the Woman's Leadership Retold. In, in fact, uh, I have been personally uh, wanting to uh, produce a three volume series uh, as we have been traveling, as I, as I mentioned to you, uh, through the Asia Leadership Track. Uh, I was able to really meet with a lot of great women leaders out there. And the idea was to identify one woman leaders, uh, one woman leader from each country that we are visiting. And so given that we were visiting 31 countries in Asia, uh, I was really able to shortlist um, 31 countries, uh, 31 uh, women leaders from, from these countries. Uh, we've got uh, you know, uh, uh, people who are in politics, people who are uh, in nonprofit, people who are in education doing really, really an amazing thing that I have come to know them personally, have interviewed them, and I wanted to put them into a book. But, um, you know, it wasn't an easy endeavor. I actually started doing that since 2016 and actually uh, wasn't able to pursue that. Um, I think I've kind of completed that around 30%. Uh, but I, I wasn't, I mean, it's a pity that I wasn't able to um, get that done. And it was really, really a lot of work uh, working with uh, different, uh, different women leaders. But, um, you know, uh, we were happy to instead uh, come up with a different version of the book um, and produce this instead, where we're able to really bring in again, Nikita from India, uh, Ami, originally hailing from the U.S. and the Philippines, but who, are now, who is now based in UAE at the moment, Kerry, uh, doing an amazing thing in Singapore, Rebecca, really a diverse experience, both in Asia and the West, uh, in Canada. Uh, Justin, you've been traveling to so many different places, having worked with so many different leaders, including a lot of women leaders. Uh, we uh, have really wanted you to share your own experience and perspective and put them into a book. And so that's uh, we're really happy. I'm personally very happy to have produced that book. Uh, next uh, uh, a slide. Um, I actually have a uh, another uh, what we call the adoptive leadership series. We've got five books, um, and uh, we ha have been working with many different leaders in Asia. And I have personally have worked with them. And uh, working with them, I was able to actually help them document some of their key learnings um, and how they're really exercising. A leadership in their own respective spaces, uh, realms to to put in the book. The the one uh, you know the, the fourth book, uh, leader a uh, new generation uh, leadership, uh, that is actually uh, you know uh, young leaders who are high schoolers, uh, college students. I think who are coming from nine different countries, uh, who I have spent time also working with them and 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 uh, spending time with them. We have also helped them to chronicle their learning as well. So as you can see, we've got senior leaders, uh, middle of managers uh, to very young uh, uh, leaders uh, that we uh, were putting, uh, piecing together all the great things that they want to share with the world. And so uh, we're really happy to share this as well. So uh, with this, I want to actually go in and, you know, let's have a, a chance to hear from our uh, authors here today, okay? So I have actually a few questions I want to raise. And I hope that everyone will have a chance to really listen from one another, okay? So um, let's start from Kerry. Um, I, the very first question I wanna ask to every one of you, but starting with Kerry is that why, you know, please tell us why you have written uh, your chapter. What really triggered you to write the chapter, uh, the piece that you have contributed to the book? Okay, thanks, Samuel. Well, the trigger was you. <laughs> well, I'll, I guess our conversation uh, and the fact that we were connected at a very interesting time in my own uh, journey. Uh, and I guess your invitation came in a very highly reflective and introspective time of my life. Um, and to be honest, uh, I struggled because um, there are just so many details in each of our individual stories um, in terms of the work that we're doing, the encounters we've had. And I wanted to present my journey in a way that re resonate 
with individuals regardless of what their own circumstances might be mm. or their own experiences might be but at a hu humanity level in our deep human being the experience and our emotional journey and our discovery about ourselves is something that i believe could be quite universal and i wanted to put that universal experience out um, and hence my chapter is probably a little bit unique that it comes in the form of a poetic you know thing um, that regardless of what circumstances we might be facing or going through regardless of the details of our lives mm. uh, deep inside us as human beings that our that's our human uh, journey and i thought that many of my fellow women leaders might resonate or maybe even male leaders might might resonate with um, the struggle that we face um, between or conflict between the external narratives that tend to enshroud us and what we uh, may be feeling inside and how do we arrive mm. at our truth or the truth or how do we arrive at connecting with our most uh, conscious um, and authentic selves. So that was the journey I was trying to capture. <laughs> I hope it resonated with you guys uh, as much as I imagined when I was penning it. Wonderful, wonderful. In fact, yes, uh, you know, one of the things that we want to do is that uh, for any one of you who are here today, we're going to be presenting to you a, a free e-copy of the book. Okay, so you'll get to really read, uh, you know, really the insights that are being shared uh, by all these authors here today. Okay, um, so later on, we'll be able to get a, a piece of the book, the e-copy. Uh, same question goes to Rebecca. You know, we want to know, you know, why you have written uh, your chapter. You know, what really triggered you? Okay, well, also you, Samuel, but I'm passionate about education mm -hmm. and how children can be better served in terms of their learning. Now, strong student performance is inextricably linked with strong teaching and strong school leadership, and yet very little is known about teachers and leaders' experiences in um, international schools, and so my study was mm -hmm. focused on uh, teachers, counselors, and leaders in international schools in Southeast and East Asia. And uh, some unique key findings from this study emerged about the opportunities and challenges that women leaders and aspiring women leaders in international schools faced. And so I wanted to get the word out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Rebecca, like, I mean, you kind of already mentioned this. So in terms of the key audience, who, who, do you, who are you really thinking? Um, who do you want, you know, that you want uh, the readers? Is, are there any specific readers that you want uh, to... Um, have your chapter be read? Yes, I mean, um, we don't get to choose our uh, our audience, but we're huh. but I am hoping that uh, leaders in international schools, women leaders, aspiring leaders, uh, those who are either thinking of moving overseas to work in international school settings, or for those who are working in teacher training or new employee induction and onboarding of any profession. It doesn't have to be teaching because the onboarding mm -hmm. and induction findings would be cross applicable to, to various professions, but those would be the people that I would be, and, and coaches, coaches and mentors. So those, those would be the uh, primary people I'm hoping to take this up. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, over next to Nikita, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. So yeah, I would say that the uh, I strongly uh, agree to the group that it's you who's the driving force. Uh, because bringing out those complexities of my own experience as a woman professional and growing up the rungs and also working very closely with women leaders in gender diversity programs uh, with large enterprises, governments, small companies. I realized there are so many different challenges that, uh, and also a lot of uh, situations that women face at workplaces. So it, it was complex to put them together, but uh, that also, uh, you know, the experience drove me astutely to discover the systemic and social biases and challenges that women face. So, and not only that, I also worked on solving some of them. So mm -hmm. for me, this chapter was all about an attempt to put it out in the world, uh, you know, make each of each one of us familiar with these challenges, because when we know them, we solve them. So that is what my intention has been. Okay, wonderful, Nikita. Thank you very much. Um, Ami, to you next. 
Thanks, Sam. I mean, obviously, you know, the, you and the Center for Asia Leadership were, were a huge impetus behind the writing of the chapter, which is really a personal reflection of mine. And it comes from, I guess, the trigger point was the point at which I was in consultation or in conversation with someone who asked me, what is women's leadership anyway? And I feel like it's a question that gets asked a lot. Um, and it really forced me to reflect on what is what does it mean? Why is it that it's women's leadership versus leadership? Why do we have to put, why is there this need to define it as women's leadership? And so my piece is really a reflection on my own journeys, maybe mm -hmm. similar to Carrie's in terms of helping to define what that means to me and also examining how my upbringing shaped my definition of what leadership is. So I'm Filipina American, but my, my existence kind of spans two continents, at least two different perspectives on the concept of leadership, one of which is more assertive, the other one which is more um, softer or nuanced or, or more compassionate and how, mm -hmm. rather than thinking about those two ways or styles or approaches to leadership as being diametrically opposite, how we might integrate them um, in our work. And this isn't just a message for women, but also for men, because I think often when we talk about women's leadership, it's hard for men to be a part of that conversation because there isn't an entry point, right? We've already defined it as women's leadership. And so it's thinking about these two different approaches as available to all of us and how being able to integrate those approaches might give us some new ways of practicing leadership regardless of, of sort of gender lines. Okay, wonderful. So uh, I, I really like what you said, Ami, uh, about that this is really for both, not only women, but also for the men, right? Um, and what you share definitely has a lot to, that, that we need to be more aware of, right? Um, and I think the awareness is really the key. Uh, I think one of the first steps to really understanding what's, what's going on, and that will give us an idea as to what we could do uh, given the challenge at hand. Um, Justin, I want to um, invite you next. Go ahead. Thanks, Samuel. I mean, some of my greatest role models in life and mentors have been women. Mm. And so I have this natural affinity to women and leadership. And so when you asked me and your foresight to include men in this book, I, I jumped at the chance because I think, and as Ami said, it's not just women, it's men that need to be part of this process. And in my research, you know, a couple of things I just mentioned here, it was quite clear that generally both genders feel that leadership is equally effective between men and women. But for those who feel there is a difference, mm. it's also women are more effective than men, funnily enough, in various areas. And of Fortune's top 50 global leaders, 23 are women. Now with those things said, there's still only 12% women on corporate boards around the world. And of chairs of those boards, only 4% are women. So mm -hmm. the disconnect is quite perplexing. And that's why I wanted to be part of this book and to give a male perspective uh, along with these esteemed female authors. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you know, I want to then kind of go over to the next question, uh, which is um, how do you envision your chapter? What kind of impact do you envision your chapter to make? Um, and I think you had some end goal in mind, right? And you kind of already alluded to this uh, in a, to an extent, but are you able to share with us uh, what sort of an impact do you envision to create the chapter that you have uh, contributed to this book? So perhaps uh, could we invite uh, Rebecca first this time? Like what sort of an impact do you want to see um, through the book, through the chapter that you have contributed? Okay. So thank you. Um, I view writing a chapter in a textbook where there are multiple authors, you know, mm. we have a we have a small space in a text. And so I view these as conversation starters. Mm. And uh, what I'm hoping to do is to start conversations about teaching and leadership landscapes in transnational and transcultural context, because mm. this transnational and transcultural context in which say international schools find themselves is not really unique. And we're moving more and more towards a, a transnational, transcultural work environment. Mm. And, um, and there's a lot of intercultural learning that is really important and valuable to look at, but um, 
in terms of schools, it hasn't really reached that conversation. So I'm hoping to start conversations. And then, um, and, and so this chapter is like a portal to that conversation starter. And because there's su such diverse uh, authors and diverse conversation starters, you know, anyone who reads this book can browse through this chapter, that chapter, and see the other conversations that have been started. And that's how we learn and that's how we grow. And uh, that's how we can make uh, our work environment, whatever we happen to work in, a better place to be. Wonderful. You know, I, I really resonate with that because I think the world that we are living in today, um, I think a lot of people are struggling with the fears and division and fault lines. Um, and I think the word diversity is really important. Um, how do we really get along with people who are different, perhaps people with different sort of uh, uh, mindset, people with different culture, uh, people who are just different than I am, right? Um, and I think it is really important. And, and I, I, you know, as I was working with you, your book, your chapter addresses this topic of the fear, the, uh, the different differences, the division, and how do we really, you know, reconcile that? I think that's really a key point uh, that you mentioned in the book. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, I, mm -hmm, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, and then leadership, like scholarship on leadership is very hmm. Anglo and Western centric, mm. uh, and but that's not necessarily the reality of the workplace. And so it's really, I think it's very important to learn about different leadership approaches mm -hmm. because there can be a lot of misunderstandings that can be sorted out if we can just uh, get to uh, the different ways in which leadership is framed and practiced and how it's structured within the organization. Yes, yes, terrific, terrific. Uh, May I invite Ami next? Yeah. So when I wrote my chapter, I wrote it from the perspective of my early experience with leadership in which I, let's say, employed a more assertive style or mm -hmm. a more empathetic or compassionate style and the reactions that I got to, to those different approaches. Um, I suppose if I were to think about my overall intention for the chapter, it would be to catch someone who is in the midst of defining and becoming, right? Mm. Someone who is on their journey and trying to understand what it is that they've got at their disposal, regardless of where they are at in their leadership journey, and to provide a context and a frame for how they might approach that process and that practice with more intention. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, that, that, you know, also alludes to the same topic of uh, diversity and how you also share your perspective, uh, reconcile the two different uh, uh, approaches. Uh, again, you mentioned about the Western as opposed to your, uh, you know, Asian um, and how that as a woman, uh, you, you get to deal with two different dynamics and you provide a very clear, um, you know, key takeaways from, from the book. Thank you. Uh, may I invite Justin next? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Samuel. I think it's, uh, from my research, it's a multifaceted approach to how we can collectively address uh, increasing women's leadership representation. And that was mm. what my chapter was about. Some of the areas that um, I uncovered in this research was what some of the authors have already mentioned, but first is the mindsets and mm -hmm. both genders need to change their mindsets. Men, it's quite often to agree and accept that women are just as capable as men. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Women, it's often, and this is the research, it's not me saying it, women need to have more confidence in their own abilities and be more assertive in applying for jobs. Um, then organizationally, it's accountability and being transparent in selection processes, picking the best candidate, but also thinking of ways to increase women's representation. And that might be quotas, which are quite topical. So my book talks about quotas and the merits for those. And if places don't choose quotas, what are alternate approaches to take as well. Um, ongoing development and training, particularly for women as they progress through the corporate ladder. For example, when women and men start off, it's about 50-50 at the graduate level. By the time we hit C-suite, women leadership drops to about one in four. So that needs to change. And I think overall it's increasing mentoring as well. So for women who are in a leadership position, it's encouraging more women to help younger, the next generation coming through also believe they can achieve those goals and dreams. And then lastly, I think it's changing workplace flexibility. I think COVID's helped us think more about that, but it's organizationally and also government policies need to change to encourage more women to stay in the, work, in the workplace and become leaders. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and Justin, as I was working with you, I could clearly see that you're really addressing your topic uh, to, to men uh, in particular, but also to women as well. Um, and, and your perspective was really important because you as a man, you know, sharing these uh, ideas and perspectives and call to actions it was really valuable. And there was a lot that we could learn from each other. Uh, can we go over to Carrie next? Yeah. Thank you. I was going to put my hand up because I think uh, what uh, Rebecca, Ami and Justin has shared is a good segue uh, to the impact that I was hoping to have with uh, my entry in this book, which is to really encourage people to go on an inner journey. Because when we talked about the polarization, the divisions and the conflicts that are plaguing society, mm. uh, it comes from a fundamental disconnect mm. and that disconnect starts within us. When we experience inner conflict, and we are not able to find reconciliation between what we want and what the mm. world tells us, then that conflict translates to emotional experiences that creates um, negative manifestations in the way we interact with the world. And it creates certain limits on our beliefs and our values where we hold on to one position and mm. we hold on to something that's important to us without the ability to connect with someone else who are different. But when we're able to see what are those constructs within our own minds that keep us limited to the perceptions and um, uh, responses that we currently have, we are then able to transcend those conflicts and see that there is a space where conflict does not have to exist. And when we can understand ourselves and our own inner conflicts as a human being, we mm -hmm. have that natural empathy to understand the similar and universal struggles that every mm -hmm. other human being could encounter in their lives. And we have a basis for rapprochement. We have a basis for supporting each other through pain, through loss, through fear, through uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And so now in my chapter was really to share that, that it is possible for us to break through and transcend what we perceive to be conflicts because of our fears, our insecurities, and all our human, very human responses mm -hmm. that we can understand and master and go beyond. So yeah. that would be <laughs> what I really wanted to share and encourage. Yeah. I think the, uh, the leadership world uh, and also the uh, learning and development space in the leadership world to start to begin um, to access this. And it's really a matter of healing that when we have that, uh, reconciliation within ourselves and we are at peace with ourselves, then what we put out in the world will be propagated and intention from a space of peace, of balance, of harmony. No one needs to be wrong, but we can all set our sights on the common goals that we want for humanity. Okay, wonderful. And, and uh, one, um, I think, Kiri, uh, you have uh, written your chapter in the form of a, a poem, right? And, you know, uh, it's a poem, but there's a, such a deep meaning there. And uh, it really, uh, I mean, it really makes you to think. And I, I'd like to uh, recommend others to, to also uh, read uh, Kiri's uh, a chapter too. I, I, I really have, um, that really got me to think a lot, um, you know, what you share in your, in your chapter. Uh, last but not least, uh, Nikita, may I invite you? Thank you. Thank you, Sam. So uh, I think, yeah, again, a uh, beautiful segue from what Kerry was talking about. Uh, I think I have tried in my chapter to do two things. First, uh, not bracket gender disparity, differences and challenges as one category, but really understand the nuances of every single country and context that uh, women have to face, you know, uh, across the world and, and really appreciate it. So we all are from different parts of the world and we bring those unique perspectives so that gender diversity doesn't become a topic of discussion, but really not getting into the granularities. And as Kerry mentioned that, you know, it is a, a fine balance between mm. external forces and internal ones. So when I was working uh, with learning and development teams, with big, big corporates that have offices across the globe, I realized that there are certain common headwinds that women uh, professionals and especially leaders face, which mm. is that we are being over-mentored, but we are not being sponsored. Nobody mm. puts up their hand for us and says that, hey, I want this woman in my team or she's one of the high achievers. And uh, that is something that's a common systemic hand, uh, headwind that I've seen across organizations but one which is very specific and internal, as Kerry mentioned, uh, also is that, uh, you know, 
as women we i observe we lot of times have that do it yourself syndrome so we try to not reach out to networks build invest in our networks we believe we'll become more vulnerable if we go out and ask people for help that needs to break down i think that is the starting point before we start looking at external forces to be corrected it's very important that we also take that internal path of breaking our own apprehensions and prejudices about the world wonderful yeah i really like what you said about you know we get mentored but we don't really see a lot of sponsorship um and and that is also one of the realities that we need to uh, deal with right yeah so thank you so so much for that so my last question before i open it up to the audiences who are here today uh, the guests who are here today um i would have one last question which is what is one or two key takeaways um and specifically as they read your chapter you you've, you've already kind of mentioned this but what is one key message that you want the the readers to walk away with uh, when they read your chapter uh perhaps can we i mean if you have two you know you're more than welcome to share that um can we begin with this time gentlemen first justin ah uh can you unmute yeah thank you samuel i think the first is mindsets and that's been mm -hmm. mentioned because it's been mentioned by a few of us because it's so important and i think that starts at a very early age and it's including women and men as i've mentioned mm -hmm. before I think the second is looking at approaches where we can increase women's leadership representation at a faster pace than it currently has been trending and it's been painfully slow and as I mentioned quotas before I think quotas are an effective tool for doing that mm -hmm. I would say that generally uh, most people including women uh, are not in favor of having quotas long term but they think that in the short term and the medium term it's actually necessary to mm -hmm. get that jump in leadership representation. And so women are then seen as role models. Young females can look up and see women in those positions and think I too can achieve that. So I'd say the second point is quotas or another sort of approach needs to be implemented in organizations and, and uh, political parties around the globe to make sure that we really increase uh, women's re leadership representation quickly and not just talk about it and watch the trickle up effect. It's just far too slow. Mm, okay, all right. Uh, what about Ami next? Sure. I mean, I think, um, uh, as Justin mentioned, mindset is, is a huge part of this work and becoming aware of um, the limitations, not only that we tend to think of, right, which are the external limitations, but what are the things within us that might be inhibiting us from being able to think about new ways of leading? Mm. Um, so there are three things that I mentioned in my chapter around that specifically. One is understanding timing. Mm. So being able to have a pulse on the groups of or teams or organizations that you're working within and understanding what opportunities for timing that you have to try mm. new things. The second is being able to listen to what's being said or not being said, mm. right? being able to take the temperature within the room and to be able to understand the dynamics and what be, might be being at play both within the external system, let's say, but also the dynamics within you, right? And um, to Carrie's point earlier about if we haven't integrated the different parts of us that might be in conflict or might have competing commitments with one another, that mm. we won't be able to, to think about new ways of leading. And then being open to adapting when things don't go as planned, which inevitably they won't. Right? So being able to have the resourcefulness and resilience to mm change or adapt or shift or know how to move and, and adjust, I think is, mm -hmm. is incredibly important as well. Wonderful. Yeah, you'll get to uh, really hear, uh, and, and Ami, like you share a lot of your personal anecdote too. So uh, you'll really get to uh, uh, get to really know uh, Ami uh, uh, deeply uh, through the stories that she shared um, and, and she shared these uh, three important points. Uh, Nikita? Yes. So I think I just have uh, one, uh, you know, uh, I would just uh, call out one important point, uh, which I have also called out in my chapter, mm -hmm. that there is an interesting tool which talks about self bias checker. It's just a simple checklist of things that we all as professionals uh, need to look at as women mm -hmm. leaders, as men leaders, as anybody, mm -hmm. uh, to just see uh, uh, a situation and uh, remind ourselves are we coming with a bias? Are we coming with 
some predisposed notion that we need to break today. Mm. So just check that and break one bias. It's step by step, and then we move forward together. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, understanding the bias and becoming aware of those biases and, and somehow putting those biases in check, really important. And Nikita, you also share a lot of great, uh, your stories too. I really enjoyed reading uh, to, to, to your stories. Uh, there are a lot of great lessons that you share. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, next. Yeah, I would echo what Justin and Ami mentioned about mindset. And it's something mm -hmm. that I've read from in your work too, Samuel, this mindset of being open to adapting that kind of mm. opportunity thinking. Um, and of course, challenges for leaders are everywhere. And the better we discuss these and understand these, the better we arrive at creative solutions to these challenges. Now, findings have um, in, in my particular, in this chapter, uh, have impl different implications for women leaders and aspiring women leaders. And so thinking about how early career women leaders experience and grow their capacity in leadership and how women leaders higher up in their experience uh, gives pause to think about charting one's growth early in one's career and tracking it and reflecting on it and planning it. And uh, so there were some challenges that were exposed that implicate sustainability. And so when I was analyzing the data and writing this chapter, there were some times that I thought, well, gee, I would have, it would have been great mm. for me to know this as an educator and as a leader when I was starting to get in educational leadership. And so I, I just hope that um, uh, people who are reading this may be able mm. to have some moments which can facilitate them with their own capacity and growth. But I also think with uh, with those who um, either conduct research or read about research, there's, there's a hopeful and happy side uh, too. In research, we often look at problems or deficits and uh, but research can also amplify those positive outliers of what's working exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And educational institutions are really siloed. And so being able to share exceptional practices with educators and leaders outside of one's own institution can really help educational institutions grow. And then everyone wins. It's not a matter of competition. Everyone wins and especially the students. So I'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah. And, and really, educators are really important. They, they are uh, in this noble um, uh, space. Uh, you know, you mentioned about the students uh, educating the next generations. And so it is really important that teachers are able to really promote these mindsets, right? Really important. Uh, Terry, yeah. Hi, um, thank you. And uh, Rebecca, thanks for sharing about the outliers. And if there was one message that I'd like readers to take away from is that wherever we are in life and wherever we are in our careers and our aspirations, it is possible that we can be bigger, better and more. And we actually do have a lot more power than we believe ourselves to have. And that is the work of discovering what are the limits that are holding us back. And we all have some mm. limits because we all have had experiences in our lives that have unconsciously created limits within us. It's just that we don't know what to break through from, but we don't know what they are. <laughs> so that's how the outliers get there. They've broken through something. Mm. And we all can do this work of breaking through our own limits so that we can make what was impossible to us before possible. And that is how we truly become change makers by making what we thought impossible, possible. Wonderful, wonderful, Kerry. Uh, that's really an inspiring message too. Uh, you know, I, at this point in time, I'd like to actually open it up. Uh, anyone who is, uh, you know, has questions, uh, you can either put it in the chat box or you yourself can unmute your mic and uh, ask your question uh, directly to the authors. So I'll give you, you know, why don't we spend the next uh, five, 10 minutes uh, going over some of your questions that you have, okay? Anyone, feel free. Uh, can authors ask other authors? Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, we can do that too, yeah. All right. Um, I'm really interested, Carrie, in um, the motivation behind sharing your message in a creative format such as a poem. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to be really frank and honest, um, number one, I had the constraint of time 
and I'm like, huh, how am I going to write my whole uh, leadership and kind of life journey uh, within that time? Um, and I thought that uh, it would get messy and it would get confusing. There's just too many details. Um, and I thought that uh, by expressing myself differently mm. in a way that touches who we are emotionally, that can bring some resonance that's different from how we tend to engage with one another as we're operating in life. We tend to use our cognitives a lot. We tend to analyze a lot. We tend to interpret a lot. But I thought that simple words sometimes and simple messages can touch the hearts and through that catalyze something within us that tells us, hey, there's something maybe that I need to explore within myself. Um, and that was why I, I thought that it could be impactful in a different way to express my journey in that manner. I think that's so cool because uh, I agree that we do tend to spend a lot of time in our heads with the cognitive, rational, mm. logical side um, and a more holistic way of thinking that includes other ways of knowing and uh, or different um, different facets of how we know and, and uh, accessing that emotive, the emotional side of knowing. So um, yeah, it's that, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, feel free. Anyone, you know, if you have any questions, just unmute your mic and yeah. Okay. All right. You know, I, in fact, uh, uh, what we can do is that you can really reach out to our authors. Um, you know, you can be, you can find them on, on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, feel free uh, to uh, reach out to them and they'll be more than happy to have a personal dialogue with you. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask them personally, I strongly encourage you to do this. Okay. So uh, with that, I want you to uh, show you um, the next is the future sort of publication that's coming up uh, at the center. Um, I want to mention to you these two publications that's coming up. Uh, book number nine, uh, it will be coming out uh, towards the end of this year, is what we call the art of the adoptive leadership. And so uh, we are going to be producing this book, and this is what the uh, the center promotes. Uh, it's about really dealing with your own legacies, the past, but also it's about dealing, how to deal with the, uh, the future forces, the drivers, and, and that's gonna help you to become adoptive leaders. And so we're gonna be producing this book and this book is gonna be coming out by the end of this year. Early next year, uh, possibly first quarter or, or, or maybe the early part of the second quarter, we're gonna be putting this book called A New Policy Proposal for the New Asia in the 2020s. And so uh, we are gonna talk about many different policies uh, that will be very helpful for the uh, government leaders, the political leaders, the business leaders to be uh, leaders to take into account. And so uh, these are the two publications that we are gonna be producing. Um, I hope that you may be able to stay uh, closely touching uh, with us so that you may be able to uh, uh, get to uh, learn, but also share uh, some of great insights that you have in helping us to produce uh, yet another uh, very good publication uh, that we're coming out. Next one is that, you know, we are going to be, uh, for everyone here, uh, please, I hope that you may be able to take out your phones. Uh, you may be able to scan the QR code. Uh, we are, in fact, going to give you two books. Uh, in fact, not only the book number eight, The Woman's Leadership Retold, but you may be able to also download uh, the book number seven. Uh, as I mentioned to you, the book number seven is on the future of work, how to prepare for it. It's a pretty uh, a thick book. Um, it's quite heavy. Um, there's a great deal of substance there, but um, you'll be able to gain a lot from that as well. Uh, our authors here, Nikita, Ami, and Justin has also contributed to, to the book, uh, book number seven, and they're able to, you're really able to gain a lot from these two books. Uh, we have also in the chat box shared with you uh, the, uh, the access to the folder. Uh, and so you may be able to download them. Uh, I, I would like to just one thing is that please do not uh, uh, you know, distribute this copies. It's really for your own personal uh, you know, uh, use. And so I hope that you may be able to just keep it to yourself. And uh, I hope that you may be able to gain a lot 
from uh, these books. Um, you know, you know, I would like to thank everyone um, for really being here us uh, here with us today. Yeah, uh, I hope that you may be able to uh, follow us on social media. Um, I hope that you may be able to also subscribe uh, to our newsletter that's coming out. And I also want to let you know that uh, this is actually the the virtual um, uh, book launch because as you uh, might know that we are all coming from a different parts of the world, right? But uh, we are going to be having a future uh, book launches, and this time it's going to be physical, face to face, and we're going to be having one in Kuching, another one in Seoul, and the the last one in uh, in Tokyo. So uh, we hope that uh, if you are in any one of these places, uh, I would you know personally welcome you, warmly welcome you uh, to these events, and I hope that we we may be able to. Uh, you know, meet you in person. Now, before we close, I'd like to actually invite every one of the speakers to say just one word, uh, a few words about um, any words of encouragement or hope that you want uh, to share with our audience here today. And as you know, that we're also uh, live streaming this through the Facebook. And so just, you know, bear in mind that we've got uh, many different leaders, uh, different audience uh, from different parts of the world watching it. And so, yeah, I hope that your message of hope and encouragement may really inspire the people as we close uh, our book launch. Okay, so this time, can we go with Carrie first? Yeah. One word. <laughs> One word, <laughs> or just a few words if you have. One word would be belief. Mm. Why do you think that's, that's uh, what do you, you know, what, what is the message behind belief? is a message of having faith, mm. having faith in ourselves and having faith in the world and having faith that there are enough people with goodness. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I really keep like going. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people with uh, in good faith uh, should align and should ally with one another, right? And that's going to create a multiple ripple effect. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Kerry. Rebecca? I would echo what Carrie said, keep going, seek the light, seek the cracks in the, you know, when you find a brick, when you, not brick wall, when you find a wall that seems to stop you, find the cracks, mm. uh, get through to the other side, seek the light, keep going. Wonderful, like that, yeah, Nikita. I would just say act, we have, we have, you know, been thinking, we have been talking, now it's time for us to act. So every single reader, whoever it is, just start with one small action. Just take one step. Yeah, one step at a time, right? One step at a time. But we need to act. Really, really important message. Yeah, Justin. Uh, mindset. I think that covers a lot. It's, mm. it's about reflecting. It's about analyzing what you currently think, having the courage to change those beliefs, which were mentioned, belief, mm. and then doing, acting. So it brings it all together. Wonderful mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And Ami? I'm going to be a bit provocative here. My, my word will be permission, mm -hmm. not necessarily to ask for permission, but permission to be with yourself with some grace on this journey, understanding that it is a journey, that leadership is a practice, and that we are always in the process of becoming. So to give yourself some permission to try and test and fail as you're working through you know, your own leadership practice, be it women's or men's leadership, um, mm. and to, to offer yourself some grace in that. Yeah, yeah. It's really a powerful message that you have, you're sharing. Uh, leadership is a practice. Yeah, it is. It is a practice. And, and we have to, uh, the activity, the intentional activity that we need to engage in uh, with the goal of improving the lives and the conditions. Yeah, really important message. You know, I personally, uh, you know, thank everyone who's here with us today. I know that uh, I know that everyone is busy, but you know, uh, out of your business, you know, you have given your time to be with here uh, with us. And again, uh, I want to also thank the authors for being here, uh, even though we're in a different time zone. Uh, but really appreciate uh, your commitment. Um, personally, uh, once again, I'd like to thank you uh, for giving your time. Um, and being very patient with me. Sometimes I, I, uh, 
uh, uh, nag a lot, or sometimes I, I, I give you a different perspective. And sometimes, you know, there has been a lot of back and forth. Uh, but even though the journey may have been quite taxing, um, you know, the, the, uh, we have, you know, really produced a wonderful book. And I hope that this book, I'm very sure, and, and everyone, just like how the authors have mentioned it, you know, this book is going to really impact an amazing, uh, uh, you know, it's going to really produce an amazing impact to uh, the world, uh, the readers who are, who are reading this book. And uh, we're going to be doing our best uh, to really promote this book. Um, and again, I think any, uh, all of you who are here uh, with us today, I hope that you may be able to help us promote as well through by following us on the social media, but also um, sharing your uh, perspective, uh, your insights on the book as you're getting this uh, a book uh, already in your hands. I hope that you may be able to read it and provide us your perspective. Um, and I hope that just like uh, Rebecca said, I hope that um, all these things will be able to uh, spark conversations, okay, conversations, so that we are able to become more aware of uh, the challenge at hand. So with that, thank you very much, everyone. And once again, thank you so much for being with us uh, here today. All right, thank you. Thanks, Samuel. Thank you, Justin. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, Feel free. Bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. We're gonna be sending you the books. Okay. So yeah. please, uh, uh, you know, uh, let me know your address. Um, and uh, a couple of the books are actually uh, a couple boxes are coming uh, on the way to KL. Uh, but uh, the, your books will be sent from Korea. So uh, I will try my best to get these books to you as soon as possible. Um, we're sending you ten copies. But if you need more, uh, please, you know, let me know. Okay, we'll be able to send you more copies. Okay, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Have much. Good day, everyone. everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Ami. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you, Carrie.